Queen Louise ruled for almost 60 years, and in her time at the reigns of Prussia, oversaw a nation becoming a global power. With her death, the people in all Germanic states shed tears for the loss of a great woman. The vacuum of power that followed was quickly replaced by the favorite of both the ex-queen and her son who is now king. Otto von Bismarck is a man hated by many and loved by almost none. A politician and minor noble who has carved out his power in the German Bundestag only through grit, intelligence, and an uncanny ability to get things done. The king is a man who holds no need to hold back his dreams of a global Germany, one whose colonial power is rival to none. This has caused problems between the two, but they both respect and need each other enough to settle. With protests sweeping across the Germanic states, Prussia has taken the lead and declared a Bundesstaat in Berlin, where all Germans may send representatives, even those in Austria and other states. This has only helped to add fuel to the fire of German nationalism that is growing hot with passion. Many states have no desire to form a new nation, and as such the dream of the fatherland will have to wait. But for how long will the people's voices go unheard? This is the third part of a Roleplay Victoria 3 multiplayer series. You like and subscribe if you enjoy, and I also stream these games on Twitch Sundays at 4pm EST. In that case, this is a uh, state visit from the current uh, Bundeskanzler, Otto von Bismarck, the favorite of the king, and is here to talk to you, obviously given the recent major protests across both Prussia and the German states demanding for a German constitution and system. Stands with um, the German miners and their current ruling parties. Uh, until then, uh, that is current uh, foreign policy of the Austrian Empire or Austria-Hungarian Empire. Of course, and, and Kaiser, I am here primarily to rectify, I think, the issues that may be misunderstood about this situation. I have the the strong support of the king in ensuring that this can be a democratic process. My coalition is the liberal wing of the Prussian former Stratus Ministerium. We, we, we think it is important that people's will is reflected properly. And uh, I just would like to clarify to the Austrian Empire that we have no plans to take military action in order to unify uh, the Germanic states. We would like to offer our sincerest uh, condolences for the, the passing of Kaiser. The Bundeswehr is an interesting concept. One alien to uh, to the Kaiser and how he likes to run things. So out of RP, we have a, a, a minor say in Russian politics? Correct. Oh, that's an interesting dynamic. Okay. Understand. Our main no, issue, our main question is is specific. whether or not you uh, support it and whether you will allow or plan to send delegates from the Germanic territories that the Austrian Empire holds. Obviously, uh, non-Germanic regionales would, would not be having any rights or voting power in the Bundestag, but uh, for your Germanic-speaking ones, they most certainly would. The Austrian-Hungarian Empire would obviously... Whatever happens in the Bundestag would not affect Austrian politics. We can discuss that externally if you wish and the german people if they wish to if you wish to send a delegation uh the german germanic people can vote we have no real cause or concern over that um, we'd like to reiterate austria hungary's position in that um not only military force we will be uh, abhorrent to but any form of economic or diplomatic coercion either um so not just marching in with your armies, but any any forms of intimidation in regards to or financial supporting of anything that could be considered um, forcing their hand, if you will. We understand what you were trying to do. We admire it to some regard. Uh, unifying the German people under one glorious nation would be magnificent. However, for us, with the... With, with your growth, we see it as cause for concern. But you need to also understand that the policy of myself, my countrymen, and my king is a simple one. He's not a public man like myself, but Friedrich the Fourth, Wilhelm Friedrich the uh, Fourth, he he is a German at heart. He loves God, he loves his country, and he loves his people, as do I, and as do all Prussians. This is not a time of the past when politics and status of the familiar tribal sort defines what we care for and who we are. This is a time of nations, of peoples, 
and of broader, more greater goals. We seek only the betterment of the Germanic people. I would also remind the Kaiser that when those Germanic states are without the strength that comes with ethnic unity, that they oftentimes find themselves far afield, such as Hanover being for quite a long period under the British influence within United Sweden, a France which is chomping at the bit for more power. I know in many ways it is a risk for you and a dangerous one, but there also is much risk in a disunited Prussia. These rallies and rebellions will only get worse. That instability could result in those Germanic states looking for help elsewhere. Nations that are a danger for both of us. Right, with your new political design, the Austrian Germanic people having a say in this would be beneficial uh, at creating a German unification that is beneficial for the both of us. Now, the king has made it clear to me that he feels as though we should make some more heavy demands in the Congress of Europe in order uh, to gain more colonies in Asia. And he's right, there's much use in it. The prize he had proposed was a large one. But on a personal level, Kaiser, I'd be willing to make a behind closed doors deal with you, which I would ask that you never tell to the king and keep between us, wherein we would support the Austrians to have influence and dominion over the Tokugawa Shogun. The island is rich with resources. We would be willing to put our support fully. I would be willing to put my for support fully behind Austria uh, being able to have dominion of it and us take something much minor in Asia in exchange for your support and the German people having their voice heard. You are a masterful dis diplomat. After our conquest in China, we have had a, obviously behind closed doors, we have had uh, small diplomatic parties towards the Okagawa Shogun to see their potential. If you were willing to back Austria in the control of the region, then we would be willing to back you in this regard and forego any support to the elites of the, the nations. This is a deal that benefits us both. I want to make sure it is well understood that at the end of the day, the Kingdom of Russia only seeks the best for the Germans, and we know you do too. This is a recent friendship and a recent trust, and it will take time. But I hope we will both walk away from this situation of a bit more. All right, very well. G gentlemen, we are, we are called here today to discuss the issue of Asia. Uh, Prussia would like to say something very briefly, very quickly, as this does pertain to our good friends in the Netherlands. Uh, we have seen, obviously, the mini embargoes placed upon the Dutch, but I would just like to, to say, obviously, that uh, it is worrying that it was not dealt with on more of a public stage like this. There are many who obviously have a claim or, or claim to, to not want the Dutch to control Formosa and other territory, but that is a conversation to be had, not uh, simple embargoing. Uh, we do believe that the Dutch have been used by the Germans to hide their own expansion, but we do not see that war is of necessary terms to this. Well, French would obviously like to avoid a war. However, we do not see the continued occupation of Formosa as legitimate. Uh, we ask that the terms be here, that uh, the powers here in this conference come up with a plan on how to uh, equally divide the treaty ports of China um, and that the island of Formosa is either returned to the Qing or to so that the Qing is, is made whole again or is given to a more neutral European power either or is we force the Qing to release Joseon and open Joseon's market open Tokugawa market and return the Dutch island of or the currently Dutch occupied island of Formosa to the Qing. We would also like to stake our claims on the territories of Burma, as the peninsula of Indochina is a matter of flashpoint reflection. Under, under no circumstances would we accept, as part of this, though, that Britain is taking any part of treaty ports or land in Joseon or Tokugawa Shogun. That's part of this treaty, that's part of this agreement, that we would open our markets to the Euro yeah. Europeans. The Austrian Empire would. Uh, wholeheartedly disagree with the French and British proposal. Um, we feel that we feel that it doesn't benefit the rest of Europe, and think it's uh, another ploy in order for them to try and dictate and control the regions of Asia. Um, we're going to dispute this, and in fact, stake a whole claim on the region of the Tokugawa Shogunate. 
as we have had many dealings with them. Would the Austrians please clarify their claim over the Telegraph Shogunate? Uh, absolutely. Uh, we wish to... Uh, the Tokugawa Shogunate is a whole region controlled by an emperor uh, based on our diplomatic findings and we find that it would be easily manipulated to be controlled by one state and through that state other European nations can trade through that so it would be a it, it would be a claim on the uh, the entire region uh, unquestionably unquestionably that is not happening there's no way that you're getting the entire population of the token of the shogunate when you we want to make it very clear uh on a personal note that we gave up significant concessions here i'm not a colonial man myself but the king was furious um so i just want to reiterate that obviously the austrians uh, will not interfere in the actions of prussia going forward in germany correct of course no we we completely understand the sacrifice you have made and we feel the kaiser i feel that the concessions made in regards to occupying the, uh, the Japanese region. Generally speaking, what is happening right now is obviously Bismarck has come to power. Bismarck only retains power much like in real life and in real history because he was a very good wheeler and dealer and he had the support of the monarchy. Same thing uh, here. The king is a, an ardent uh, supporter of colonialism. Never mind, the king fucking died. How the fuck did the king die? All right. The king is dead. So there is now Oscar von Hohenzollern in power who is nothing but really a boy he's only 18 years old and bismarck would have huge sway over him which... greetings good uh chancellor i believe of prussia yeah buddhist consular uh, von bismarck what can i do for you ambassador we simply wanted to uh, know what's the uh, current status of uh, the dual alliance that you maintain uh, has in regards to uh, neighboring nations and how we may uh, maintain the peace between our uh, two nations uh, in turn we have full support for our Germanic brothers in Austria, whatever it may be, as the ties of our shared history comes before all things. What does this regard specifically? Well, we are aware that the uh, Austrians and I uh, are attempting to de-escalate uh, matters within our two nations. Uh, we are also aware that, of course, the Russians uh, seek to acquire more land and power across uh, the various uh, regions of the world. And we have concerns for both of those things. We would also prefer a peace, but I will be quite frank with you. The, the Austrians feel very strongly about the situation in the Ottoman Empire. In the past, we had been interested in cooperation with the Ottomans, but after uh, the, the cooperation we've seen with France, uh, as well as just the, the uh, general, I suppose, going a very different diplomatic path than Prussia, I, I frankly think there is very uh, little for us to talk about here, as the French are becoming more and more hostile to the Germanic people. Well, if there are proper incentives to us, then we would be willing to uh, reconsider uh, that situation, but that would be uh, dependent upon uh, the two of you to decide. I would think the issue here at this point is uh, the expansion of the Ottoman Empire is extreme, and many in Europe still remember the days when the Ottomans uh, were a danger for all of Europe. Yeah, uh, RP-wise, what we're doing is, uh, RP, there's basically a call for, like, a German government. I did an RP situation where, basically, there's now a, a government for all Germanic states, including Austria. And, uh, RP-wise, many states, including Bavaria, refused to let delegates be sent from local areas, which, to us, would see a stifling joint German cooperation. Obviously, Bismarck's using this as a play for German unification, but our justification is valid. Much like in the 1840s, uh, I'm RPing that there's basically just a series of protests and widespread movements in Germanic countries uh, to basically support a German nation, which was very, uh, happened historically. Given the low wages of the workers in Prussian student islands are receiving more and more parents are pushing to send their children to work in the families. I'm gonna stop that. We are trying to pass compulsory school education here. We are gonna start to look towards the Americas pretty soon. Uh, my friend. Hello there, what can I do for you? I brought the Russian delegate with me because uh, uh -huh. they are wholeheartedly in agreement with supporting us. I do, uh, I do, I will reiterate that I do find it disappointing as I do feel the Ottomans moving towards the French sphere is a little bit dangerous, but if this is the route that we must take, uh, we will certainly go yes, for it. Um, I, I believe it's going to be more beneficial for the Austrian Empire, for the Prussian Empire, uh, because I, as the Ottomans might be moving into the French sphere, uh, but Russia, 
uh, we'll see you both as a friend. Uh, we'll work together uh, with both of you. We'll build cheap textile workshops in Ethiopia. We can also build a bunch of coffee there. That's what we really need to do. It's way more useful to build uh, coffee and dyes there. Because we can build textiles anywhere. We can't build coffee plantations and other stuff there. We passed universal education, which I had said at the start of the game we're going to do. Let's look at him. All right, so our Kaiser is Oscar von Hohenzell, and he has expensive tastes, and he's persistent. He won't be pushing a colonial policy anymore, though, like his father did. So qualities for us will become a little bit less important. Endorse uh, multiculturalism. Oh, no, cultural exclusion is what he would wish for. And property to women. Wow. Yeah, he is a reformer. Bismarck was conservative in many ways, but he was a real politic politician. He'd just do anything needed to keep himself in power and push for what he really wanted, which was a powerful Germanic state. So our laws are more or less what we want. We will go for cultural exclusion, but there needs to be more RP for that. What would make sense for us to potentially do at this point is poor laws in the future, because that was something Bismarck did push through in real life. Greetings, Prussia. How you doing? Hello there. I am... Yep. British Consular von Bismarck, I am here to speak about an issue that is growing more and more concerning uh, amongst the German Bundestag. Yeah, so I can help you? Currently, there is a region of territory currently under the control of France, which has a large population of Germanic people. We, uh, in the Bundestag and within Prussia and the many Germanic states, feel as though uh, Germans are to be ruled by Germans, and we are becoming more and more concerned uh, with that situation, especially given your hostilities towards Prussia uh, in, in the recent times. And we begin to worry about how those people may be treated going forward if things continue to get grow more tense. Well, I don't know what you speak about as far as tense relationships go. It was mostly an issue between your proxy state of the Dutch and... Um, the Dutch are a sovereign nation expansion. able to but exert anything that they would like, but... Uh, Yes. We, we've come to we've come to agreeable terms with the Dutch, and that's been <clears throat> uh, the, as far as the lands of Alsace Lorraine go. That is unequivocally French territory, and while and we uh, give free access to the Germans in Strasbourg to cross the border freely into Germany and Switzerland, just like we do all of our borderlands. But under no circumstances would we see the um, relinquishment of that territory as something that we can abide by that does create a bit of a problem here as again i my first interest as bundekanschler is to look for the the interests of all all germans of which there are many in that region i mean close to a million i believe in the past the holy roman empire had dominion there and that is why there is now such a large german population still in that region you are claiming to now be the successor state of the holy roman empire is it's that is uh, the holy roman empire was dismantled and um, the holy are, roman empire the holy roman was empire an institute was an institution and a nation collective built around uh, germanic peoples we are not the successor of the it hre was... by any means clearly if you don't mind uh, but we do protect them like the hre did once and that is why this is growing very concerning for you do not have a right to annex territory from another play, another country just because it has Germanic peoples in it. Just like you're unable, just like I would not accept you annexing Bavaria, just like I would not accept you annexing Austria. These these are other places of Germanic people that you have legitimacy to, legitimacy to my land. You do not. That is not cause for legitimacy. You do when not did I walk in here and start Bavaria claiming land? that I wanted your land? Did did I ever do that? I mean, yes. By bringing up the land in Alsace Lorraine, yes, you're talking about. Taking my land, yes. Regarding the situation in Alsace Lorraine, what I was here to propose would be the creation of an independent Germanic state there, which would be uh, obviously not controlled by the French or, or the Prussians. Quickly, no. Absolutely not. There's no giving up of French territory. There's, you say there's almost a million Germans there, there's half a million French there. It is not land that we are giving up under any circumstances to a neutral a neutral party or a german another german state i see this as i see this as you escalating and i am uh, this is absolutely ridiculous that you even suggested that france give up land some neutral territory so you can continuously swallow up more german states into your sphere of influence it's absolutely ridiculous that is uh quite disappointing to hear i came here to have a cordial conversation with you about the protection and of the germanic the people there. from france and, and under no circumstances Will it ever happen? If you Very want well. to talk to France on equal footing, then you do not start it by demanding us to give up land. Uh, you mistake me. We we do not stand on equal footing with you. We look down upon the French. Just to clarify. 
Thank you for your time, you. Ambassador. I expel your diplomats and I'm embargoing you. So, obviously, we were trying to instigate him, and it went much better than I expected. It's a little weird. We'll need, to, we'll need to shore up our economy elsewhere, but overall, getting them out of access to our economy is better than the other way around. So, that, uh, that actually went really well. Wood, we're going to import from Russia as soon as we can. We can do it right now. Beautiful. Good. We have poor laws now, which will give welfare benefits and social security. So what we'll do is we'll kind of just maintain whatever we need to coalition and government to get what we want. We, we're currently with a really liberal coalition-ish. Uh, it's up, Bismarck. What? Bismarck was just shot on the steps of the Bundestag while preparing to return to speak with the assembly regarding the possibility of what to do regarding the people in Alsace-Lorraine as well as other Germanic states in the chaos. And an assassin of unknown origin has uh, shot him twice. He will survive, but he's no longer currently in government. He is not dead, but was taken by ambulance, uh, horse-drawn ambulance, to, to the nearest hospital where he was operated on and is currently stable, but in no fit condition. As such, the Prussian government is in complete chaos and uh, all current political plans are halted. We also gotta take these regions. I never did that. That's just a colonial war. We also can start a play for the Hanover Estates. I want it to be down at, uh, what would it need to be? We can't go over 25, so it'll need to be at like 4.9 before we can make the play for Hanover. We'll take Elba and then we'll take Hanover proper and then that will allow us to form the Northern German Confederation. We're gonna go ahead and try and catch up on steel production. That's really screwing us right now. So how's our economy doing? I think we got behind a little bit there. No, we're, we're actually very close to France right now. They got a bit ahead of us, which is unsurprising because we were dependent on all other goods, but I wanted us to detach from them, and we did, so. We will get oil discovered at some point in the Germanic regions. I don't know if we control them right now, though. I think it's over here. Are we the biggest steel producer? We should be at this point. Number three, really? Yeah, Britain produces almost double. We need way the fuck more. We'll make it a trade nexus. Uh, we do have a skyscraper in Berlin, by the way. That did happen earlier. I've just been so distracted, which is wonderful. We have really good generals, too. That's the other thing. We're getting a massive fucking investment pool now. Look at that. And we're stopping the game right after we conquer Hanover. All right, cool.